Our great God, let your greatness break forth into us this day with eternal effects for your kingdom and your glory in all the earth. Give very clear understanding of your word this morning and let the spirit of your word enter our lives and become our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Please be seated. Let's make a journey. Those of us were here last night, we looked at Father Abraham and Mama Abraham. I mean, uh, who's Mama Abraham? Sarah. Okay, we will get back into them shortly. But I want you to go back to where it all began in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Are we there? And God said. What did he say? Let us make man in our image. Now the us there when he said let us the us there speaks of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit let us make man in our image so the making of man these three came together to make man the father the son the holy spirit they all came together none was absent and we're together and the agreement was that by the time we finish making man you will see us in man something about man should remind you of who god the father is who god the son is who god the holy spirit is unfortunately now when you see a human being a human being will clearly remind you who satan is is that correct? Most people you see, in fact, there are people after you meet somebody say, You are devil. Is, have you said something to somebody like that before? Because nothing about the person reminds you of the maker God. But the original plan was God said, Let us. In other words, no human being should be a disappointment to the Trinity. That when people look at you, something about your life, your character, your behavior, reminds someone clearly that God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit were involved in your formation. But so many people you look now, you, you cannot say no. You, you will quickly say no. God was not involved in this one. Have I confused you? So he said, let us make man in our image. And this man after our image will be after our likeness. What you'll be after, what you'll be pursuing is what we like and our likeness. Now, what did it go into that verse, going back into it? And he now says what? This man we made in our image, man and woman, what next? Let them have. And when God says let, there is nothing that will unlet. When he says let, remember, earlier on he said let there be light. Could anything stop light from coming? No. When he said let there be light, what next? There was light. So why should God say let you have dominion and you don't have dominion? It's because there's a question mark on the image matter. Am I confusing you? 
God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, if we are sure that is settled, what is the next thing? Let them have. You will have. But, it's not just that you are going to claim it. If the matters of his image are not settled. The dominion matter are not for people that look like the devil. Did I confuse you? No. So, and I wanted to look at that. We are going to push into a few matters shortly. Let them have what? Dominion. And I'm glad this is Jesus' dominion. And the Jesus that we are talking about that is in charge of this ministry, he was there in the making of the first man. Before Abraham was, he was there. Are we together? So, let them have dominion. So, you now say, you see the, the plurality there, let them, so he's no more just talking about the first man. He's talking about every other man who will be in the image of God. Let them have. Including you. If you will resemble God, you will be a haver. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand my English? You will be what? A haver you will have. Somebody that has is a haver. You go have. <laughs> what will you have? Dominion. And I wanted to see how it is now outlined. Let them have dominion. What next? Over the fish of the sea. Did you see that? What next? Over the fowl of the air. What next? Over the cattle. Uh-huh. And over all the earth. Finally, and over how many? Some creeping things. Every. Now, I, I want you to understand something here. Did you see that word over? Did you see it? Let them have dominion half over. And that word over is repeated five times in that verse. Now, what for you to understand what we're dealing with, what is the opposite of the word over? Under. Meaning, I am not making an underman. When you are in my image, I don't design you to be under, but over. And the final thing man was to be over there is what? Creeping things. What are creeping things? Insects, snakes, things that their belly, their chest are on ground. Now, if you are not over even creeping things, but you are under things that are creeping, that is under. Okay. And many people live their lives truly under even what is creeping. Serpents are creeping over your destiny. But as God helps you and I return into the reality of his image, friends, it will be bye-bye to the underlife. Welcome to where? The overlife. Did I confuse you? Let him have dominion over the fishes of the sea. The Fowls of the air over all the earth. Now, if he brings you to a dominion life over the earth, it means this earth you are marching on. 
you will not be subject to it. The earth will be under you. If somebody goes to take part of the earth to make enchantments against you, what they use is say, ah, sorry, this man is over us. Ah, uh, yo. Uh, uh. Do you understand what I'm saying to this point? Alright, but let, let's, let's understand something. Let them have dominion. Let me pick out the one for the fowls. What are fowls? Birds. But for you to know what we are talking about, go to the first parable of Jesus. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat, sat where? By the seaside. What a side. Are we there? Verse 2. What did he say? And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So this service was going to take place by water side. <laughs> so that what did Jesus do? He went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude did what? Stood on the shore. Now here was a moment where the preacher is sitting and the listeners are standing. Am I confusing you? So everybody hearing him, what were they sitting? They stood. Where was he? He sat in the ship. Verse 3. And he spoke what? Many things. Unto them. But the trouble there that is what? Those many things he spoke them in. Parables. Am I wasting your time? He spoke how many? Many things. Now listen. Jesus is not an empty talker. He spoke how many? Many things. One of those things he spoke, if it enters your life, can make you become something. Kaya. And he spoke not one, but many things that can make you become many things. Whatsoever he wants you to be, one word from his mouth can change your entire life. Can you imagine somebody who said, let there be light and sun rose. Sun became. Is the same speaker. And we all were born to see the sun. The sun still remains and we leave it behind. Why is the same speaker not producing a Christian life in you that lasts? And he spoke the sun into being and the sun has not diminished in strength. Am I confusing you? Alright. So, he spoke how many? Many things. But, what was the trouble? These many things he spoke. He spoke them in. They are inside parable. So, if you are to access any of those things, you must break the container called parable. He spoke how many? Many things. If I gave you five alive right now, you know five alive. Five alive is in a pack, a container. If you don't know how to open it, you'll be carrying five alive and be five times dead. <laughs> so, every valuable thing is in a container. So, he spoke 
many things, but they are imparable. So anybody that cannot crack the container will be a stranger to the content. Am I confusing you? Alright. Say, behold, a sower went forth to do what? To sow. Now that's easy to understand agriculturally. Farmer sow. So here is a heavenly farmer about to cultivate the ground of a man's heart. He went to sow. And he spoke many things. And now he comes and says, Look, so I went to do what? To sow. Verse 4. And when he sowed some seeds, this seed is not Guinea It's not maize. It's the word of God. The word that is God Himself. Some fell by the wayside. They didn't drop in a proper place. What happened? The fowls. Do you remember Genesis 1.26? Let them have dominion over including what? Fowls. So we are now coming to the fowls. Fowls that are not aiming at guinea corn, But are aiming at the word of God that should make you something. And what do they do? They, they, when this fowl come, what do they do? They devour. Kingdom seed. Words from God that have ability to make you what God intended you to be. But let's jump to verse 10. We will break into this fowl matter shortly. And the disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Did they say to him, Why are you speaking to them? They said, It's good you are speaking to them, but these things you are saying, they are in parables. Why? Verse 11, he answers them. He answered and said to them, Because it is given unto you, my own disciples, my followers, to know the mysteries or secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to this crowd, even though they left their homes and they come here to meet me at the water side, it's not their portion. Because it is given to you to know what? The mysteries of the kingdom. So, the word of God contains the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you, every other realm that has secrets and mysteries that torment man, they bow to the secrets of heaven. Kaya, oh God, oh God, oh God. You fear those in secret courts, secret society. You don't know they should fear us. If the secrets, the mysteries of heaven become our life, the moment you step into a place, by the mysteries of heaven, the mysteries of the waters, the grave, shrines, become like child play. Am I confusing you? When you meet a native doctor, the man is full of the secrets of darkness. But the secrets of light don't bow to the secrets of darkness. Like, oh God, the light shines in darkness. And what is the conclusion? Darkness said, we don't, we don't, we don't, the word comprehend means understand. So we don't understand this. Anytime light shines, darkness will always say, this is beyond study. This is beyond understanding. 
let's give way. That's why darkness always give way when light comes because it says, I don't comprehend this. Can you imagine you get to a point where when they make enchantments and divinations, they say, we don't understand her. <laughs> let's run. He answered himself because it is given unto you to know the mistress of the kingdom of heaven but to them. Who are the them? This crowd that has gathered. So it's possible you have gathered here and he's saying this is not for you. You are not yet my follower truly. Hmm. Verse 12. Okay, leave it there. So let, let's understand something. That parable he gave, did the crowd understand it? They didn't understand so much that the disciples said, Oh God, why are you doing like this? We are ourselves who can see that this is not entering. They may be saying, Amen, Hallelujah, they are not getting it all. <laughs> hmm. If you are not in that conference that Jesus spoke, and this crowd gathered. And you met some people later on who attended the meeting. Okay. Alright. Look at, go to verse 36. So that you can understand what I'm saying. Verse 36. Are you there? Uh huh. Are you in verse 36 with me? Then Jesus did what? Sent the multitude away. Stop. 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 Which multitude did he send away? The crowd that gathered from chapter 1. I mean, from verse 1, verse 2, that he spoke in parables to. Did they understand what he said? Eh? What did he now do in verse 36? He sent them... Let me ask you a question. Where did he send them to? What? Where is a way? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Are you with me? Yes. Then Jesus sent the multitude to go and preach. He sent them to heal the sick. He sent them to cast out devils. He sent them to where? Where is the way? No, he didn't even say he sent them home. He sent them where is the way? Stand up, sir. That man in the middle. Stand up. You. Uh, you. Stand, mm -mm. you. Uh -huh. I want you to watch the way he demonstrated the meaning of a way. Can you do your hand again the way he did it? A way means out of the way. You are blocking way. A way. Can you imagine people coming to Christ? Only to be sent away. Not to a destination to perform anything for heaven. Ah, how many times we come to church and to meetings and hear amazing things. Only to be sent away. How many times have you heard precious things the seed of heaven dropping in your heart through the bishop and all the men he brings and even on your television and the books you read and at the end the master cannot send you to do anything he just sends you away will you accept to be sent away today now let's let's understand it can Five of you stand up, the two men and the three, and yes, five of you stand up. Let me make, use it for illustration. Let us say you were not around when the crowd gathered at the waterside to hear Jesus. And these three men and two women were there. And you now meet them on the road and say, ah, ah. What's your name, sir? Alex. Alex, your own, sir. Enoch, Mama, Christy, Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, Christy, uh, Enoch, Alex, Alex. 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 Alex.
and legs. Ah uh ah! -uh. Uncle, where are you coming from? I even went to your house. I didn't see you. Where are you coming from? What will be the answer? Ah, you miss. Miss what? Ah! Reverend Jesus was preaching today. Where did he do the preaching? Ah, it was by water side. If you see the crowd, why? That man got a crowd though. Is that so? I miss. What did the man say? What did the answer be? He spoke many things. Are you still with me? Yes. Hey, the man spoke many things. Of the many things he spoke, which one have you come back with? That somebody like me who was not there, I may connect to it also. What did the answer be? In fact, his disciples intervened for us. They told him, why are you speaking in parable? We didn't get any. In fact, he has sent us away. He couldn't retain any of us. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. None of them could be retained but sent away. Ah. Do you know how we grew up? When we came to meetings and we heard the word of God. Sometimes while the program ended, some of us couldn't close. We were detained in God's presence. From the conference, we looked for bush to pray. Under holy detention. Some of us can go away. But something is hanging over our head. possibly represented their families their villages and they came back after meeting the master the maker and the transformer and they came back with nothing for their constituencies you can sit down am I wasting your time <clears throat> okay we are pleading with God that he won't send us away. Amen. He will send you to a definite assignment to be fulfilled. Amen. But if you understood nothing of the things he spoke, send you to where? You don't send a man who didn't understand what you said to something. Hmm. Okay. That verse 36, can you highlight it again? Then sent the multitude where? Away. And his disciples came to him saying what? Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. This is the right thing to do. Did the multitude understand what Jesus was saying? It means the disciples also didn't understand. But what did they do? They said, excuse me, sir. And that's the right thing to do. Question. When your teacher is teaching in class and you don't understand, what's the next thing to do? Excuse me, sir. The other people went with understanding nothing. But the disciples said, excuse me, sir. Declare this thing. We do not get it, you know. No man can access answers who is not mighty in questions. Am I confusing you? Many spiritual answers come as a result of determined, a life determined in questioning heaven. And say, what is this? Please open it up. Hmm. So, go to verse 39. Okay, 38, read it from 38. Go. 
Go back to verse 28, please. 28. There's a particular scripture I'm looking for in that Matthew 13 where he gives the meaning. There's, okay, look at it from verse 18. Are you there? What did he say there? Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So that was a parable the multitude didn't understand and sent them away. Now, he said, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Verse 19. When who? Anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. What happens? Then cometh the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? Satan. His demons. Then cometh the wicked one and does what? Catch it away. That which was sown in his heart that he does not understand. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. In the parable, those that receive seed by the wayside that what happened to the seed? The fowls. Who is he interpreting the fowls to be here? The wicked one. So, when he said, let us make man in our image and let them have dominion over including the fowls of the air. What is the fowl now we are talking about? It's not just the birds flying around. What? Fowls, devils that aim at devouring kingdom seed. 